I recently visited China where I was invited by New to tour their factory and R&D center where their electric two-wheelers are designed and produced. If you thought you knew what went on behind the curtain, you're likely in for a few surprises like I was. Hey everyone, Micah here with Electric, and today I'm coming to you from Changzhou, China, where we're here at News Factory, checking out how they build all of their electric scooters, mopeds, dirt bikes, and more. Come along with us while we check it out. I spent the entire day at the sprawling complex, starting out the morning with a tour around the showroom to see what kind of vehicles New produces. To be honest, I was already pretty familiar with them, partly because it's my job to cover this stuff, and partly because I've actually owned a new scooter since 2020, and my wife and I love riding it around town. We don't even have a car, we just commute on two wheels. But even someone like me that has followed the company for years had a few surprises waiting in store for him, including much of the brand's local domestic market lineup. A lot of these electric scooters are technically electric bicycles, even if the vestigial pedals don't get used very often, but they comply with Chinese laws regarding e-bikes and are a big part of the national push to get more people commuting in environmentally friendly ways. While the domestic market is obviously New's main market, the international product line is still quite extensive. It covers everything from large electric mopeds to smaller electric kick scooters and even full-size electric motorcycles like the RQI here. In fact, I even got to see the concept TQI, which never made it into production, sadly, but it was still cool to see it in person. I could have nerded out in that showroom all day, but Michael and Michael had a lot more to show me, and we were just getting started. Next on this list was a visit to the assembly floor, where work actually starts with inspections to ensure that every component built by a supplier is produced to news exacting specifications. Any discrepancies would affect the safety and robustness of the final vehicles, so these quality checks are critical before a component can make it into a bike. Once they pass inspections, those components begin pre-assembly, where they're loaded onto these hanging shelves that are sent by flying conveyor system to the assembly lines for different mopeds. They drop down in the right areas so that workers can pluck off the components they need at the proper time, making the process easier and more efficient. Each assembly line produces a different scooter, but the process is largely the same, with a bare frame moving down the line and getting its electronics, batteries, motors, wiring, body panels, seat, and other components installed along the way. It only takes a few minutes for a scooter to traverse the line, and honestly, if you walk down it too quickly, you miss major steps. It's impressive how much is happening so quickly. But to make sure it all happens correctly, a series of quality inspections occurs on every vehicle as it leaves the line. There's a long checklist for the various components, and then once passing the first inspection here, the scooters move on to a riding test around the factory grounds. Only after passing the last of those tests can it finally get sent to the warehouse for storage ahead of being loaded on trucks to be taken all over the country. Most of these models here are for the domestic market, so they're shipped in bulk to different dealers. But New has many products for export as well, and some of their models are purely for export, like the electric kick scooters, for example. These are produced in a similar fashion, moving down the line as various components are installed on their frames until reaching the end of the assembly line. Again, a series of rigorous inspections is performed first statically, and then with a riding test. The short indoor test track has a variety of surfaces to mimic different types of riding the scooters might see in their life. Since these scooters are meant for export, instead of being shipped in bulk, they're individually packaged here in the factory in their final retail packaging so they can be sent overseas. These are the last hands to touch the scooters before folks like you and me rip into the boxes like Christmas morning, ready to ride our new scooters. Similarly, the new XQI electric dirt bikes here are also intended for export, but these get packaged in much more robust steel frames to protect them on their long journey. These are specifically headed to the Canadian dealer and are probably arriving to our friendly neighbors to the north right about the time this video is being published, since I seem to edit videos at about the same rate as a shipping container circles the earth. Speaking of the XQI3, that was one of several new models I had the chance to test ride in the parking lot of the factory. Since most of these models are meant for export to folks like us, they aren't technically street legal in China, and so I couldn't take them out on the roads. Ironically though, 
the XQI dirt bike here is actually street legal in the US. So it's kind of like a Suron, but more powerful, higher tech, and actually meets federal requirements to be registered as a motorcycle for street use, if you're not planning on keeping it off-road. While that might sound like quite a feat to achieve that street legal status in the US, remember, that's what NEW does all day every day. They're a motorcycle company, even if scooters aren't often thought of as motorcycles most of the time. Now of course they've got different scooter models that offer a range of performance from cute little grocery getters to larger and more powerful models. There's even one that I can't show yet because it's not released, but it is over twice as powerful as my own new and pretty darn impressive. In fact, speaking of power, I finally got to test ride a new RQI motorcycle after literally half a decade of covering its concept announcement and path to production. It reminded me of the same type of tech that I'm used to from new, but in a much sportier package. After my test riding, I got a special treat where they took me into the engineering department to see the engineers working on what will surely become the next generation of new vehicles from new, though I wasn't allowed to film anything, and so what you're seeing here is just video from the R&D department. I'm pretty sure they were planning to use that flashy thing from Men in Black to erase my memory anyway. What I did get to film before leaving though was what you're seeing here in the R&D department, where news engineers ground truth their designs before they can make it onto new vehicles. They ensure that your flasher button can be mashed a few tens of thousands of times underwater just in case you find yourself in that situation, they make sure the scooter can compete in CrossFit competitions while twerking, and they even put their machines through expedited aging to make sure that even Father Time himself is no match for these things. And since a laboratory can only take you so far, they also have a team of riders whose job it is is simply riding all day every day, racking up tens of thousands of kilometers quickly on all of their bikes to discover any down-the-road problems that could be lurking in wait. For me, visiting the factory was an eye-opening experience, revealing the depth of design and production behind the new electric moped that I've personally relied on for years. While I always appreciated it as a consumer, I now understand the effort that was put into safety and longevity building these things. Visiting the factory also provided insight I wasn't expecting. Despite the repetitive nature of assembly line work, Many employees seemed to be having fun, chatting, and laughing with their coworkers as they worked. It definitely wasn't the boogeyman image we often hear of overseas manufacturing. And I was free to basically roam around the entire factory wherever I wanted to go and film outside of the engineering department. So for me, the experience was illuminating and informative, opening a window into a world that I never really get to see like this. For most of us, our experience with micromobility products we ride each day starts at purchase. But the story really begins much earlier, with years of design work culminating in many skilled hands, bringing those ideas and materials to life in the form of something that helps us navigate our world. It's a reminder that every scooter, bike, or board carries not just its rider, but the work and vision of countless people who made it possible. Thanks for watching everyone, we hope you enjoyed that video taking a deeper dive into how New builds its different electric vehicles. If you did like the video, why don't you give it a thumbs up? And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any of our future electric vehicle videos. We'll see you here next time.